Good morning. I don't know, do I have the microphone on? I do. Good. So this morning, we're beginning our liturgy of morning prayer with the penitential order. And that begins on page 319. Page 319 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please stand. Our Lenten opening in the middle of the page. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Oh, excuse me. We're now on page 318, the Decalogue. Actually, 317, I'm sorry. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow to them nor worship them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Now we continue with our opening hymn, which is number 398. 398. Thank you. 
Continuing on the bottom of page 319, Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbors thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now kneeling, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Now we'll have the singing of the Kyrie. Please stand as we continue with our Liturgy of Morning Prayer on page 80. Please stand. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the Jubilate.
The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 19. Please read it together with me by, responsively by the full verse. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and the righteous and righteous altogether. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. The first reading is from Exodus. God spoke all these words to Moses on Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make Wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the reading.
The second reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks demand, desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ends the second reading. Our hymn before the gospel is number 401. Verses 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3. Our gospel reading is from St. John. Please be seated. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at the table. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money in changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. 
His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The other Jews in the temple then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. The authorities then said, the temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was talking, excuse me, he was speaking of the temple of the body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scriptures and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Lent. This third Sunday of Lent. Now, Lent's a time of reflection, of giving up something or taking on something, all for the sake of opening ourselves to something new. That something new, I say, is discovering, rediscovering the gospel, rediscovering our faith, God's love, being alive, the wonder of life, and who Jesus is for each of us. Let's look at Jesus' interactions with the disciples. What Jesus dwelt with the disciples was them bringing their own understanding and interpretations to who he was and what he said and did. They were Jews of their time, the first century, Galilee. They were ordinary people. They had been taught the Old Testament. And they seemed to have regularly brought their past understanding and interpretations to Jesus' teaching. In other words, they were often listening to themselves, bringing their own interpretations rather than listening to Jesus. And Jesus was always pointing to something new with them. It seems that they couldn't hear the good news that Jesus spoke and exemplified. This good news of love, forgiveness, generosity, and new life. There was something they had to give up. Something to let go of so they could hear Jesus' words of good news. I assert that just like the disciples, we often don't see Jesus, the gospel, as they are. We see Jesus and the gospel as we are, or think they should be, or want them to be. This can be seen in our everyday lives. Do we really see others as they are? Or as we think they sh or do we see them as we think they should be or ought to be? There may be something to give up, to let go of, so we can hear and see others for who they are. To hear and see the gospel for what it really is for us and others in the world. And lends a time of letting go of our understanding our interpretations, a time and to see and hear with new eyes and new ears. As an everyday example of this for me that points to this issue, I look at my own garden. The garden in the spring and the summer is a new garden each day. Things have grown, things have died, things have been eaten, things have moved. But I don't see things that way. I come out each morning and I look at the garden the way it was the day before and the day before that. I don't bring new eyes to the garden each day. Or I don't bring a new way of thinking about what's available in the garden or what the garden could be. Mostly it's just the garden. 
There it is. There are the roses. There's the astilbe. There's the phlox. These plants are there, and those plants are over there. And often I complain about what's not happening and what should be happening. Oh, no, those weeds. Oh, my gosh. I thought I had purple astilbe over there. Where did it go? I had, I had the white phlox on that side of the garden in the last spring. And one day I had what I will call a Lenten moment. I noticed one morning how I was seeing the garden in the same old complaining way. In noticing that in a moment, I gave it up. And what appeared before me was amazing. The garden showed up in its splendor and beauty. I was shocked. There was something new before me. It was as if I had never seen this garden before. It happened because I noticed my default way of being about my garden. And in that moment, I gave it up. Now I see that I have to practice that every day, giving up that way of knowing, interpreting, and understanding the garden this spring and this summer in order for me to see what's really before me, the beauty and splendor of this garden. In the garden I have, I gave my mother a number of years before she was alive, a little plaque. And on the plaque I put it out each day, each summer for her, and now I keep it. It's that wonderful saying by Dorothy Frances Gurney, the kiss of the sun for pardon, the song of the birds for mirth, one's nearer God's heart in a garden than anywhere else on earth. You know, those words actually have come alive for me. I used to see it just as a plaque. Isn't that nice? Isn't that a nice poem? But now I look at it and go, yeah, it's really, really true. Another example for me, the same thing of not seeing and hearing what is before me happens, began to happen when I started going down to the Salisbury School boathouse on warm summer mornings to row the single skulls. I looked at the lake and the trees and the mountains, and they looked like they did yesterday and last week. I was missing the beauty before me. I'm often more concerned about how am I going to row today? How will my rowing technique be? Will I be as good as it was last week? Or will I have the same problems I had yesterday? What am I going to tell my coach? What's he going to say? Oh, my gosh. So my thoughts and my concerns kept me from seeing the gorgeous view, the ripples on the water, the mountains in the background, the trees surrounding the lake. And when I began to give up those concerns and thoughts and stand on the dock and look out, I was present to the splendor and beauty of God's creation in that lovely place on the lake. And it made my rowing so much better. I was so much smoother when I was paying attention to the loveliness of God's creation. See, the church... This church, it's really not the way it was yesterday, and it's not the way it was last week. Now, it looks pretty much the same. Rugs here, pews are there, lights are on. You're probably sitting in the pews you normally sit in. But actually, everything is new. We know that on a subatomic level, everything's always changing. Even our bodies. This is not the body I had last week. It's completely undone and rearranged and grown anew. But we don't see those changes. We don't see those news, new, we don't see that newness. We see and think about things as they were yesterday or the day before, or even our thoughts or our concerns. And there is something new this morning. See, Jesus was pointing to and teaching the disciples a new expression of love, forgiveness, and grace 
in order to see and hear this new order of faith in God's love, they had to give up what they thought, their old interpretations, their thoughts about what Jesus should do and what he should be. They're wondering about what could happen, what ought to happen. They also had to give up who they thought they were and what they were capable of. For us today, on this third Sunday of Lent, I'll say that Jesus is calling us to give up whatever we see may be between us and the wonder of this message of love, forgiveness, and grace. To, see this, to begin to see the newness in everything around us, to see people as they are, to have a new expression of compassion and love, not only for others, but for ourselves. To forgive ourselves for past offenses or present events. To be constantly discerning what love means for us today, given the challenges we have in this town, in this world, in our families, in this church. So Lent is a time for us to notice, to let go of, to give up what may be binding or blinding us from the wonder of life, the wonder of people, the wonder of this extraordinary place, the wonder of our faith, the wonder of the message of God's love, forgiveness, and grace, the wonder that's available to each of us each moment. So I wish you a holy Lent. Take on something. Give up something that may enable you in your expression of a life of wonder, a life of love, of forgiveness, of seeing God's creation, of seeing people who they really are, of being alive, being a human being with whoever you may be with. Amen. And now as we consider the wonder of this place, the wonder of our faith, the wonder of being alive. Let us stand and say together the Apostles' Creed on page 96, page 96 of the Book of Common Prayer. Creator of heaven, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Of sins, action of the life everlasting. Lord be with you. Together.
Lord, keep this not the need. and 43. Be seated. I made a couple of mistakes there. <laughs> I put a hymn where I was late getting the hymn. Anyway, so that's great. Are there any announcements, Sherry or Barbara? We have two birthdays, we have two birthdays this week. Let me get my. Here, could I use your sure. Good. Okay. So, are you ready for the first? Who are the two birthdays? Yours. Mine! Holy mackerel! And Barbara! <laughs> My Thursday and Friday. Oh, that's great. So. It's fine, good. I remember my, my aunt, my father's sister, who left Lakeville. Mine. When I was little, she'd say, it happened again. 
Her name was Katrina. So I said, oh, I But anyway, thank you. Barbara, are you going to do anything special? Good. We are going to New York. We're going to go to the Metropolitan. Have some a fancy lunch, and then I will will come home, and I piles of pre <laughs> It's funny. I um, Eileen said, "What would you like for your birthday?" And I went, "Oh, I want one of those things you have." So she said, "Well, you better order it." So I ordered it, and it came a month ago because <laughs> it was the last. So um, she took it and she put it under the bed uh, and wrapped it up. So I'm going to get get my birthday present, um, which has been. <laughs> it's a it's a down. Used it with all this weather, but and I thought about that and I said, "Don't you want to give it to me?" It's pretty cold out. She said, no, no, it's your birthday. <laughs> so anyway, so that'll be fun. Good, 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 good. So we'll now continue with our reading of the collect. Our collect of the day can be found in our leaflet, and we'll read together the contemporary day. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with you and the Holy Spirit, one God and ever. Amen. A collect for the renewal of life. The King Eternal, whose light divides death into mourning. May, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A collect for grace. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continues. Well, the prayers of the people today, Form Four. Uh, page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Anne, Sue, Carolyn, John, Peggy, Anne, Raphael, Mark, and Kay. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray, uh, pursuant to the diocesan uh, cycle of prayer for Christ Church Cathedral Hartford, Good Shepherd Hartford, Grace Church Hartford, and St. Martin's Hartford, and for the prison ministry and prison chaplains, the ECCT, Faith Behind Bars and Beyond Ministry Network, and for the church in the province of Uganda. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Today, remember, especially Betty. Are there others? Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually. Liturgy continues on page 101 with the general thanksgiving. Together let us say, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. Give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness. Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. In Chrysostom, Almighty God, with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O as may be best for us to come life everlasting amen looking we'll see the
Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful in the world, help us to stay Follow thee more dearly. Love thee more dearly. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of us evermore. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 655. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.